Handles come in so many different forms. You have the downhill attackers, all business, straight to it. Then you got the players who like to mix, blow you to sleep, and then strike. And then you have the guys who like to shift. They're hard to touch, and if you're not careful, they'll embarrass you. And that's just to name a few. I think for a long time, we've always thought of handles as something that's hard to achieve or you have to be born with that fluidity that makes you look smooth, right? You may think that, but I don't believe it at all. I like to think of myself as someone who could dribble. I wasn't born with any of this, so you could trust what I'm about to tell you. This is the story of how I got my handles. So something you need to know. I started playing basketball when I was eight years old, which is kind of late compared to the competition. I was in the living room of my grandma's house, taking piano lessons in front of the window. And right outside that window was all my friends playing basketball on the street. I went in our den and I told my dad, hey, I'm done with piano. I want to learn how to play basketball. And that's where it all began. My dad was not some basketball guru. Matter of fact, he played for the Chicago White Sox, but he did have some basketball experience. He taught me how to play right here in the driveway. There weren't any drills, just a lot of shooting and layups, one-on-ones, but the beginning of my handle journey and the most important step to it all happened when I was nine years old. My dad gave me this little green ball. I don't actually know where it came from, but my mom let me dribble it in the house. It's the best thing that could have happened. I watch things that happen on TV, and then I go in the living room and imitate. Over and over and over. It's the reason why these things became second nature. Because I'd be walking around through the house, dribbling all the time. So it allowed me to catch up to kids who started playing before me. I had no drills either. It was either imitation or imagination. Fast forward to now, I created a ball for everyone to have access to. It's a silent ball that you could dribble throughout the house and no one would know. Dribbles like a regular basketball too. Same size too, but it doesn't do any damage. I could throw it at a TV, a mirror, nothing. Me as a kid, this would have helped because I definitely broke a few things in the house, which mom was pissed about. You can get it on interlab.tv for pre-order. If you truly want to get better at this stuff, though, you got to make it a lifestyle. Being that moms let me do that, I learned to dribble as well as I knew how to walk. But it wasn't just that. I was watching and one mixtapes and NBA games all the time. I see what they were doing, then I go try it in the house. And then I go try it on defenders until it became second nature or just a lifestyle. Let me use an example. I'm older now and I deal with all these random aches and pains, right? So I've been doing all this mobility stuff. When I started doing stretches, only sometimes, I never really got that flexible or healthy. But the moment I start stretching every time out during the game, when I woke up stretching before I went to sleep, it made it a lifestyle. And in less than a month, I started seeing crazy improvements. Do you get it yet? If what you do or who you want to become isn't a part of your everyday lifestyle, it'll never become your reality. Now, when it comes to basketball, if I was growing up in this generation, given what I know now, I'd be way better and it would have happened way faster because of social media and the ability to look up anything that I want. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and sub if you want more. And go sign up on interlabplus.com if you want to get better and have nobody there for you. Allow me to be your trainer.